Thank you everyone for joining us today for our Feature Spotlight webinar. Today, both Matt Amell, Principal Product Manager, and I, Vera Chen, Technical Marketing Engineer from Sumo Logic, will discuss the topic of outlier detection and predictive analytics. In addition, we welcome Mike Cook from TuneIn to share some valuable first-hand experiences with using Sumo Logic's outlier detection capabilities. So let's go ahead and get started with the agenda for today. I'll start off with some background around what outlier detection is and its range of applicability for different use cases. I will then introduce to you what predictive analytics is capable of and what use cases you might find valuable to your organization's needs, and we'll follow up by showing you a quick demonstration of how it works. And then next, we are excited to have Mike Cook from TuneIn give you some background about the TuneIn organization and how TuneIn leverages Sumo Logic's outlier detection to gain critical business insights. Following that, Matt will be excited to share with you a little bit about our advanced analytics roadmap and what you can expect to come in the coming months. And finally, to wrap up, we will have a live Q&A session where we'll address questions that arise throughout the webinar. So please feel free to submit your questions through the chat interface, and we'll queue them up and address them during the Q&A session. So starting off with outlier detection, let's say that you're given a series of timestamp numerical values. An outlier would be a value identified within a sequence that may seem to be unexpected and can include values that might be higher or lower um, in measurement than expected. So Sumo Logic provides you with the outlier operator to help identify these outliers. The outlier operator tracks the moving average and standard devi deviation of values within a sequence and detects and alerts when the difference between the value exceeds the mean, which is the rolling average, by some multiple of a standard deviation. So the default standard deviation is set to three, but Sumo Logic has tunable parameters that allow you to adjust the sensitivity as well. So this is a picture of outlier detection, and you can see in this graph, uh, the pink indicators show the outliers, and the blue uh, shows the threshold that moves um, with the rolling average. And also, uh, in terms of, so in terms of syntax, in addition to a typical query where you're already parsing out server response times within event messages, you just need to identify the time slice, which can be in seconds or minutes. So right here is the time slice. And then you can also, uh, you can also add the outlier operator syntax into an existing query that you have. And it's just these a couple lines here. So here, um, you're measuring response times by time slice, and then the outlier operator is on response time. So the last example covered a single dimension, which was just response times. However, outlier detection also works for multiple dimensions. For instance, you can monitor an alert on response times across an additional dimension, such as all deployments, or all systems, or all users. Here, the additional syntax on top of the base query that is already parsing out response times, we have the time slice, again, uh, the measurement of response time here, uh, you could do per minute or per second or per 15 seconds, uh, whatever measurement you want there. And then the additional dimension here is by cluster, or you could change this to um, all host names or um, some other dimension of your choice. And then the outlier, here in this example is measuring response times. Uh, this is the line right there. And for the multi-dimensional example, uh, usually you have a table format view uh, versus the graphical chart. So if you're charting many clusters, you, you would actually prefer to see that in an aggregates table visualization. So I'll show you that in just a short bit. So here are just a couple tunable parameters I wanted to show you, and we'll do a live demo right after this, but you, all you need is the time slices, and then also in the outlier operator, you can define a threshold value if you don't want the default of three. Uh, you can change it to four, five, six, or even one or two, whatever you want, um, depending on how sensitive you want the alerts to be. And then consecutive actually is a parameter you can tune that identifies uh, and alert you if you have multiple data points that are hit 
um, versus just one outlier. If you want, want it to alert you after three consecutive data points, you can identify the value as three. And then for direction, you can uh, separate whether you want just the low values or high values or just leave it at default for both. And then for the window, this is the number of trailing time slices that you're using to calculate for your baseline. So the default would be um, actually set at 10. So let's go ahead and do a quick uh, live demo. So here you can see I have S3 outliers. And this is just on a sample photo application that I have living in AWS. So that's my source category. I'm parsing out status codes and also the status, and especially where the messages contain the value 400 or above. So this is typically a set of errors. Um, 200 would be OK messages versus anything beyond 400, maybe some sort of critical error. And then the time slice by 15 seconds. And we're counting by the time slice, so we can count how many errors occur every 15 seconds. And then we're going to use the outlier operator on the count. So here, after we run the query, you can actually see this pink indicator, which shows an outlier. And you can also see these little ones. So as you can see, maybe this might be way too sensitive for you. So in here, you can actually just adjust the parameters. Why don't we change this to three? Um, and Actually, if we change this to three, we can avoid seeing uh, some of these outliers. And also, since this is only one data point, this should also be removed from the results as well. So we'll just rerun that. So now the pink indicators have uh, disappeared. So this is how you tune it. Um, as you can see, there's the window value, the threshold value. We can change this. If you make it smaller, it'll become more sensitive. And if we take it back down to one consecutive equals one, you can see how much more sensitive this will be. So I'm going to click start again. So the indicators pop up there again. So that's just a little bit about how you can do some tuning. This is an example of how you can configure multi-dimensional outlier detection. So again, we have the source category, we're parsing status codes and status, and then um, identifying where status codes are greater than 400 by the time size of 15 seconds again, and then we're counting by time size and also status code this time. And the outlier count is also by the dimension of status code. So there were just two changes in this example. And we can comment this out for right now. So I'm specifically looking for where a violation equals one, and I'll show you that. However, let's just look at what this returns without the violation. So here, this is the aggregates table I was talking about. Since we don't have a line graph uh, available for this because it's multiple, multiple dimensions and many results in here. This column right here, count violation, indicates the outlier. So if this value equals one, that is the outlier. And zeros mean uh, no indication of outliers. So if we were to configure an alert or even a dashboard panel, we would actually add this line in where the count violation equals one. So when we start this again, you'll see only the outliers here. And then you can go ahead and save this to a dashboard, interactive dashboard, or live dashboard, or you can also save the search and configure an alert. So every time an outlier comes up, you can actually go ahead, save the search, and schedule it. And then you can adjust the frequency. You can also, you can do every 15 minutes if you wanted, and you can send an email, can do a script action, or we also have a service now integration to have a ticket open to have someone look into the issue. So let's talk about some of the use cases that we have. So there are many DevOps, IT ops, and security and compliance use cases for outlier detection. I just wanted to share a few with you, and you can revisit these later as well as we'll be sharing this deck, and you can look over um, the deck on SlideShare. For instance, uh, for some DevOps use cases, they allow you to detect issues on a server by monitoring the input and output of events by each instance. 
And you can also find issues in code or infrastructure due to changes in latency or response times by each type of transaction. You can also identify issues in processing requests by monitoring changes in semaphore wait times. And you can find issues by host, database, or module servicing transactions by monitoring the number of successful transactions per host or database or software. Now, in the case of IT ops, you can also figure out how to lower your costs and decide when it's time to move to a different quality of service mechanism. For example, if you monitor the number of requests by piece of content, maybe such as online videos, you can determine how to lower your costs and decide when to move. Um, and then also you can identify problems with a customer's instance by measuring the latency per individual customer. You can discover when, when an individual database is experiencing degraded performance by tracking the duration of queries per database host. And you can detect when there's a degradation of performance of a specific CDN edge location, since you can monitor CDN performance by each geographic location, so anywhere in the world. Now, a couple of security and compliance use cases include the ability to monitor outbound traffic from hosts. So you can identify elevated outbound traffic on a specific host, and then you can discover when a user suddenly begins logging into a host server they've never logged into before. And also you can reveal suspicious traffic on unexpected protocols or ports. So this is good for security and compliance use cases. Now, just quickly, I wanted to explain the difference between outlier detection and anomaly detection. We get this question all the time. So outlier detection, as we just went over, measures the change in numeric values over time. With anomaly detection, you can measure the change in patterns or in the structure of event data over time. So this is based off of our log reduce technology, which discovers patterns and changes in the structure of your data versus just a numerical change. And then um, also you can try using our summarized delta syntax that helps you compare and, and compare data against the baseline to find the changes um, in the patterns. So this is what the anomaly detection dashboard looks like. So this one identifies anomalous patterns and you can see on the left over here, this is, uh, you, this is configurable. You can change the data sources that you're interested in looking to according to how um, your infrastructure stack looks like. And then we have severity codes here as well. So uh, there are different colors that indicate different, uh, different types of, different types of uh, anomalies that might have occurred. So red would be a critical alert, blue would be something unclassified, um, yellow would be medium, green low. Uh, the great thing about this is that you can reclassify events as necessary and then you can help tune the algorithm to recognize and auto-classify future events similarly. And you can also change the threshold by toggling this anomaly threshold slider. So the nice thing is anomaly detection incorporates an element of machine learning into its algorithm. And it's based off of LogReduce again, and you can configure all the different data sources here, and it's very flexible. So you have an element of auto detection, uh, which also incorporates a little bit of human feedback. Let's go ahead and start talking about predictive analytics. So the Sumo Logic Predict operator uses a series of time-stamped numerical values to predict future values. For instance, in reference to the syntax, you can count values over a time slice and then project what the value would be 10 data points into the future, as indicated by the, let's see right here, the deep blue line in the diagram. So 10 data points into the future, this is, this is how you can predict future, uh, future value data, uh, future data points. And here, the forecast parameter can either be a simple number, such as forecast equals five, which predicts five data points in the future, or in this example, forecast equals 10. It can be time-based, uh, and if you don't specify, sorry, if you don't specify a value, the operator will default to three data points into the future. So let's show you an example of how you can use predict operator within Sumo Logic. Let's go back to the service. So right here, we have a, the source category as the same photo app 
um, that I have living in AWS. And here we're actually parsing out um, here property idle wait times. So where monitored property equals idle, and it's a percentage, so we're grabbing um, the value out from there. And then we're calculating the average, so the average uh, idle time. And also here, this is where the syntax is for predict. So the average CPU by one minute, and then forecast equals five. So right here, we don't have anything too... Um, like too much of an uphill trend or lower, but you can imagine actually if you were really at close to 10% idle CPU time, that would be alarming. So this line here would actually show you um, a projection into the future where you might be heading towards zero if your data is starting to to really, uh, if the, sorry, if the CPU time is really starting to decline on, on the idle percentage. So here you would be able to configure an alert. So if you were to configure an alert, you would just comment this out so you can include the where syntax where average CPU, CPU predicted would be less than 10 because that's the idle percentage uh, available. So anything below 10, you might be worried about having enough resources um, to make have your photo app available. So let's talk about a couple of use cases. So here are a few examples of popular use cases for predictive analytics. First, you can project failure conditions such as low or zero disk space, very similar to what I was talking about. And you can schedule real-time alerts to determine how to provision your infrastructure before outages occur. So that's how you can be proactive. You can optimize load balancing configurations or gain user and business insights by monitoring the slowdown or lack of transactions or lack of logins to your service. And then you can also plan for additional resources or configure load balancing to handle sudden in increases in infrastructure loads. So there are a lot more, but these are just a few examples to get you started. Now let's uh, open this up to have Mike join us. So moving forward, TuneIn has been an amazing customer of ours, and we are grateful to have Mike Cook, the Director of Operations at TuneIn, share a little bit about TuneIn and initially how Sumo Logic is used within the organization with, with respect to outlier section. We are delighted to work with such a successful company that provides access for millions of avid listeners and users to over 100,000 plus live radio stations and millions of podcasts around across like 230 countries and territories across the world on demand. So I'm handing this off to uh, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Vera. Um, let me share my desktop here in just a second and we can get started. A little bit about tune in real quick before we get started. The as Vera mentioned, we're a worldwide streaming audio company. Basically, we're a very large internet directory of all the audio on the web. And our goal is to provide that experience to our users and to make sure that they have the best audio experience on, out there. So right now, we're a little over 55 million monthly active users. We've got um, over 100,000 stations, 5 million podcasts. We're on every single major platform you can imagine, iOS, Android web, Windows. Um, and even embedded in things like the Amazon Echo, a variety of cars, the Tesla, Xbox, and PS4. So we started with, two minute, two, ah, with Sumo about a year and a half ago. Um, we were looking for what most people were with log aggregation, search, dashboards, kind of the standard spiel. Um, as far as tuning goes, it started with the operations team and kind of monitoring uptime. We evangelized it out to the engineering teams to give them a better feel for what's happening on their platform and in their code. And and as of today, we've grown to encompass support, marketing, QA, and now our programming and content teams as well. So what do we use it for? We do dashboards for error rates. We can monitor for releases for changes in performance of various APIs. Uh, we have scheduled searches for where error conditions that we're looking for that need to wake up an on-call. Um, support can use it to track device IDs across our platform. Not every user logs in, but if they contact support, we are able to look them up by their device ID. Um, we use it for security auditing and we use it for um, kind of a standard syslog on the network devices as well. So a couple of sample apps. Uh, firewall usage is a standard usage for a lot of people. Uh, statistics for the TuneIn.com website. What's our error rates look like? What does response times look like? Uh, Flash, Java, you name it. Now, whenever we began, um, a couple of months back, we kind of ran into a problem where 
outlier became really, really useful for us. Um, station activity. Since the majority of our stations are not run by TuneIn, they're run by third parties, it's very hard for us to tell when something's popular is going on, which means it makes it hard for our content teams to kind of um, push that out to more users. We'll do a lot of targeted push notifications if we find out there's like a live band streaming somewhere or there's some other uh, event people need to know about. Uh, a good example is CNN for presidential debates or if there's breaking news. So we don't really have a good way to view that and we don't really normally care about it. Uh, for us it's agnostic except for the little bit of our API usage that comes into play for those. Um, that changed on July 17th. Uh, <laughs> with a One Direction radio party of all things. So a fan page discovered there was a station on TuneIn that played One Direction 24-7. Um, they embedded our web player on their website. They shared it on Twitter, became a global trending hashtag with 2.7 million tweets, and our bandwidth and utilization shot up. We were trying to find the source of, the, of this problem. <clears throat> this is a good problem, but we're still trying to find the source of it. Um, Sumo Logic was the first place we went to for it. So. We began looking for abnormal activities on some of our API hosts, which you can see here in the graph. Um, and we found this guy. This is what the station looks like. So there's a little bit between the last graph and this graph, but this is the activity that we saw coming in of people tuning into the station. Um, and it's very hard to see from this graph, but it maybe got one or three listeners a day uh, before this. And at this particular, by the time we found it at 9 a.m. and it went on for about 36 hours, uh, by this point, it was doing something like 900 tunes every 15 minutes. So uh, we were able to use Outlier and interactive dashboards for our content team so they can see station activity now. Um, we don't really know which stations to monitor, but using Outlier, we can keep an eye on certain ones we care about, where we have partners we work with, whether it's a live streaming event, and instead of having someone stare at a monitor all day, we use Outlier to send us alerts when things are going odd with them. So. It also enables us to find dynamic and exciting events that we can surface to more users faster. We're able to track station popularity spikes. So if we see other behavior on the platform, like bandwidth spikes, we can correlate it to that. Um, and we can track even our push notification event successes. So this is what Outlier looks like on that particular day for the One Direction radio party. And it should look fairly similar to what you saw Vera doing earlier, but you can see almost immediately on the left side of the graph where all of our outliers started triggering on this station. So we took the technology that we used for that and we, as we launched our premium product uh, about a month ago, we began using this for our stations on the premium site too. So if you don't know, TuneIn has a premium product where we basically have 40,000 plus audiobooks, MLB, a bunch of premium sports, um, and about 600 plus commercial free audio stations. Now those we do care about. Uh, we do want to know how they're performing. Uh, if audio stations or music stations aren't doing well, we want to swap. We want to see if we need to change content on those stations, if we need to change DJ, if there's an audio streaming format. But monitoring 600 stations and having someone reviewing these all day long is very, very expensive to say the least. So this is where Sumo Logic comes back in for us again, especially with Outlier. Um, since a large part of the premium music offerings are via third-party vendors, um, they don't necessarily track performance the same way we would want to, and they don't track, if they're offering up to 100 stations, they don't necessarily track one particular station, and it makes it hard for us to swap out the bad stations. So a good example is MLB. We have a dashboard. Um, this is a pretty standard dashboard, interactive dashboard here. Uh, we can see listening requests by which team, um, who's hitting it, iOS or Android if people are following it. And you can see at the very bottom to, or traffic and events, which are people tuning in to listen to different games. And we can also see from the heat map where they're coming from. Outlier becomes important. If we look at the same version of the dashboard, you can see where we suddenly see, start seeing outliers on the listening performance of the stations. So generally you'll see a grouping MLB could be hundreds of stations. Um, we have a couple of other radio partners give us the same thing. We watch for outlying behavior. If a particular subset is experiencing problems, either positive or negative, we're able to get alerts off of that and we can move faster. So the other nice bit is, we're, as I mentioned, we can track side-by-side -side performance by vendor or by genre, and we're able to see abnormal patterns within those genres and providers.
And that's it. That's how we use Outlier. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for sharing that with everyone. All right, great. Let's move on to uh, have Matt here share a little bit about the roadmap with us. Good morning, folks on the call. Um, I want to take a few minutes. I, I, I recently joined uh, Sumo as a product manager for machine learning uh, uh, products. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, I'm fairly new. I, uh, I have been here for three months. I joined to lead the product management for machine learning technology at Sumo, and 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 uh, it is pretty impressive uh, set of capabilities. Some of which you uh, you went through. Uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about very high level uh, about the roadmap for the next uh, eighteen months. And essentially, the next release, which is in October, we are going to uh, release uh, what we call visual delta analysis. Upon releases, may have a different name, but uh, but right now, for the purpose of this discussion, and essentially, what that is is to enable users to uh, to specify a baseline period. period and a target period and compare uh, the events uh, of those two periods. A use case, a good a set of use cases that can be supported, for example, are uh, for IT op, uh, they may want to see what was different right before a failure. So they want to compare the events at the aggregate and various dimensions to a similar period the previous day or previous week or some period that was in terms of traffic and uh, normal activities uh, was similar. So that's IT op use case or a most common op IT op use case. A DevOp may want to check if the latest rollout resulted in any unusual event. So they may want to compare events that have been happening since the uh, latest uh, release and rollout, let's say a few hours ago, and compare it to a similar period earlier, uh, in early days, uh, last yesterday or last week or other similar uh, periods. And uh, finally, security uh, may be interested to compare access patterns at a certain hour of a day and see if that's normal for that particular time zone and for that particular application. And one way to do it, of course, is to compare it with similar uh, periods in the past. So that's essentially our Delta analysis. Currently, we support Delta analysis, but it is fairly uh, uh, complex, meaning that you have to uh, run a query, then pipe it through, summarize, save it to a baseline file, and then remember the name of the file and later on compare it. So it is not interactive, it is not easy to use, and that's how we are addressing it. And plus some improvement in the functionality. I'm very excited about this. And again, it is gonna be in October release. So uh, in a month or so, we will have that capability available to our customers. Uh, I also mentioned improved signature inference, uh, and that refers to the capability when you run, if you're a customer and you are familiar with Summarize, you know that we take logs and we essentially learn from a corpus of logs what are the common occurring structures within that log space. And, uh, and and enable user to look in in the event uh, based on the structure of the logs. So uh, that is a machine learning algorithm that generates signature and uh, uh, and there are a couple of major improvements that we are making uh, uh, and and hopefully users will be able to uh, uh, to benefit from it. Moving on to the Q1 of 2016, we are also introducing this application-based signatures, meaning that for common applications such as uh, MySQL or RDS, 
Tomcat, Apache, uh, or various other Cisco, Juniper, we are uh, starting to assemble a set of common occurring uh, structures in the events and, and, and use that as a seed and include it as part of the apps that you download. And the, the machine learning starts from that seed and improves that structure. So uh, that's what I mean by improved signature for common apps. Uh, we also are going to ha integrate our predictive analytics with the upcoming uh, GA of metrics. And uh, also, we are going to support multivariable predict and outlier. Currently, outlier supports uh, slicing based on uh, specific dimensions, but the uh, the graphing is limited to only one dimension. So we are going to uh, uh, change that and enable both predict and outlier to perform on uh, any number of uh, metrics or uh, data stream. Moving on to Q2 of 2016, uh, we are going to have enhanced cyclicality and seasonality support. Uh, talking to many customers since I have been here, uh, one thing that everyone acknowledges is the uh, cyclicality of events. Whether you are a uh, radio broadcast uh, provider on, on, on the internet, uh, such as TuneIn or any other uh, SaaS platform, you have a certain cyclicality, whether it is hour of day, day of week, uh, and seasonality, summer versus winter, that uh, impacts the number and the quantities of the metrics that uh, you monitor. And so for the machine learning algorithms, it is important to be able to distinguish those uh, cyclicalities from abnormalities. And that's uh, uh, something that we are going to release uh, Q2 of next year. We, are, we have started to work on that with some uh, successful prototype, but the GA is estimated to be early to mid Q2. And of course, uh, additional improved signatures. So we are going to, uh, again, release these seed signature for common apps uh, over time. And uh, finally, uh, the next year or the second half of the next year, we are going to uh, introduce model-driven event scoring where uh, the algorithm will learn based on two things. One is the stream of incoming uh, logs and events and metrics, as well as the user having labeled it uh, based on severity. So a user over time starts labeling events as severity one to 10, for example, and then, uh, we regularly create and learn from these labels and are able to um, bucketize and score events in real time as they are uh, coming in. And uh, then uh, have uh, uh, um, essentially potentially alert associated with different level of the score. So that's the uh, current working view of our roadmap. If, uh, if uh, you have any questions, I'd be happy to address that. So yeah. thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us. And we did have a couple of questions that came in. And let's see if we can address them right now. Uh, can you? The, the first question uh, from Dean is: Can you do nonlinear uh, extrapolation uh, with predict? 
currently as you saw in the demo the current uh, uh, capabilities doesn't support that but we are actively working on that so uh, sometimes around predictive analytics integration with metrics we are hoping to introduce more uh, uh, sophisticated uh, 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 sort of regression. So one of the questions was, when can we expect to see examples of this added to the Sumo knowledge base? And I think currently we do have a, a couple examples up in the help documentation, but I can take a look into this and, and get back to you, uh, to the person who uh, asked this question, and we can you know, refine that if we need to. I'll work with the um, documentation folks. Tune in. Yeah. And and we did have a question for TuneIn. It said, would TuneIn talk a bit about the rollout and usage from operations through support and other departments in their organization? So adoption, adding new data sources, training, etc. cetera. Uh, let, let me hand this over to Mike to see um, if he has some insight there. Hi, Mike. Um, Hi. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I'm trying to think how we did it initially. Um, I mean, we have access to all the logs, so we just went ahead and started pulling everything in. We didn't know if it was all useful or not. Um, and then what we did is we took a we took an evangelist stance. We had a, a fellow on my name team, Smith, who I don't know if Vera's had a chance to talk to him, but he's a very very enthusiastic Sumo Logic contributor. Um, he basically would build out sample dashboards to show them what it was capable of and how it related to their team. Um, and then he would go show it to them and ask for changes, improvements, things that they could do, uh, other things we would ask them. Support was a great uh, use case because it's kind of a non-standard one. Is we asked what sort of problems they ran into day to day that they couldn't, that they had to rely on, say, our engineering or development teams to help them troubleshoot. Um, and by giving them access to the logs and showing them how to query and look for these type of things, it was a big help for them. Um, and once they got started, they were pretty much up and running on their own. Great, thanks for sharing that, Mike. Uh, let's see if there are any other questions. And yes, um, the question was, are the examples you showed at the beginning going to be available after the session? Yes, we will definitely, uh, we've recorded this session, so we will share it with um, the attendees. And also uh, the slide deck will be available as well. So I will make sure I reach out um, to the person who asked for this and we, we will be sharing that. Okay, great. Thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, that concludes our Feature Spotlight webinar for today, and a big thanks to Matt and Mike for hosting this webinar with me today. I'll look forward to working with you both again in the future, so feel free um, for everyone to submit any questions that you might have regarding this webinar to uh, Vera at SumoLogic, V-E-R-A at SumoLogic.com, or Matt Amel at M-A-M-E-L at SumoLogic.com. And thank you to all of our customers uh, for the continued interest in our product and for all the support as we continue to grow. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.